Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And I know I've been featuring the double barrel vehicle, the brand new toy on this channel quite a lot in the last few days, so I wanted to take a step back and focus on not playing the most overpowered tanks, not featuring the most insane and outrageous kind of gameplay, and going back to basics and focus on when you're not playing the best tank, you're not in the best matchup, you don't have the best crews, as I don't have here on this tier 9 Chinese light tank, but what still can I do? So I'm going to focus primarily today on trying to let you know what was going through my mind in this tricky scenario of trying to deal with carrying a game in a WZ-132 way. So just to set the scene, this tank has the worst win rate of any of the tier 9 light tanks, and while it deals the most damage, it's, it, it still has the worst win rate. And that's because this vehicle it's more of a kind of like a pseudo damage dealing light vehicle. Uh, it just has the worst camo. It's also quite a large vehicle compared to a lot of the other tier 9 lights. It doesn't have the best view range at 390 compared to the T49, which has 410, I believe. The only thing that this tank has going for it is alpha damage. It has 320 alpha damage with 220 millimeters of penetration with its 100 millimeter main armament. And so with a vehicle like this, you have to be a little bit more sneaky when you want to try and scout at the start of the battle. And that's why I found this absolute little funky bush here to try and catch heavy tanks as they're making a way through the one line. Now, one thing you've got to watch out for is when, when you have your tank destroyers. Sure, the tank destroyers have done a great job here. We immediately get 2,000 spotting right at the start of this game, shutting down one of the tier 9 heavy tanks. But just because they start pinging you, don't feel that pressure in your light tanks to be able to just jump into the fray. Because more often than not, those tank destroyers are trying to use you. They're trying to use you and they're just really hungry for damage. And while it looks like it's the obvious choice for them to risk your life to be able to possibly get a shot, uh, more often than not, don't listen to those little armchair generals, especially the armchair generals with the biggest guns and the weakest armor that want to sit at the back, right? I'm not saying to sit there and be passive inside your light tanks, but have a think. Take the information that they're providing you, or take the suggestion that they're providing you, and then take a step back and think, what are the risks if I manage to go in towards the IS-4? Who else is going to be able to spot me? Am I going to get caught out by the medium tanks? Will it be able to give our team an advantage? And in retrospect, I, I really don't think that pushing aggressively towards the IS-4 is ever going to be the best play. I think the artillery is going to punish me to all intents and purposes. There's a tank destroyer, two tank destroyers, four tank destroyers actually on the enemy team that could be in position that could punish the WZ-132A with its rather large profile and terrible camo rating. And my terrible camo rating is completely compounded by the fact that my crew on this vehicle were horrific. I think they're pretty much a fresh crew. It's a fresh 100% crew. I was using one of um, Six Sense consumables on this vehicle now, directives I guess we're calling them, as you can buy those now for 20,000 credits. So you don't even have to spend bonds on them. So when you're training up your, your new tanks, uh, or maybe, should I say, training up your new crews on vehicles that you don't play very often. And it's definitely worth spending that, that 10, 20,000 credits on, on just being able to have Sixth Sense. It's definitely the most powerful skill you're ever going to have in World of Tanks. Alright, so right now, it's about just thinking, is the IS-4 going to spot me? It's about being aware. Luckily, the alpha damage on this tank is high enough that you don't have to be constantly thinking about the shots and you have enough time to be able to jump out of the sniper and take a look to see what's happening. So this game, it's definitely not going how I would have wanted it to go. We've got a tier 10 heavy tank that made it his way towards the IS-4 but realized, yeah, we're not really going to be pushing through there against the artillery in the FE-215 B183. Sometimes you can't just push through a flank because they're going to have too heavy support and you're going to lose too much if you're even able to be able to take it. And so you have to fall back and try and assist the other flank and just leave the enemy campers in the form of the IS-4, the FE-215B183 and maybe some of the other tank destroyers to just not be useful. Oh, an absolute disaster there. I bounce a regular round off a T-55A and almost with complete frustration I double tap the two key to load premium rounds because that could be a game losing miss there against the T-55A and there you go now he's sneaking up on us but luckily we hold our nerve we stay in the bush he doesn't manage to spot us and the Progetto shuts him down and while we have six tanks left and the enemy are now outnumbering us two to one make that five tanks versus ten yeah this is this is starting to become a bit of a tricky situation all right, so it's all about just figuring out what you're getting yourself into. And that is that we knew that the Progetto was a one-shot, and now it's a time to try and be aggressive in your light tanks. 
With your light tanks, you want to get the early spot. You want to try and provide as much vision for your team as possible and try and get some assistance damage. But really, light tanks come into their own in this mid part of the battle when you can actually manage to isolate your opponents, when your spots actually mean something. I'm not saying to, to camp and do nothing for the first part of the battle, but really, if you can still have your hit points, when the game starts to get spread out like this and you have an opportunity to isolate players, that's really where your light tanks, and it doesn't matter how many crew skills you have, or it doesn't matter if you're playing statistically the worst tier 9 light tank, you can still have a profound impact in the game. So we shut down the Leopard, we get spotted. Now I'm trying to trick the T-28 into thinking that I'm actually coming from the south. But instead, I've decided, well, let's go. Let's go hunt this T-28 because we're not going to be getting effective shots on the 257. So I'm going to make my way over the ridge. I'm hoping that he's aiming the other way, but actually he wasn't. So I take my time to try and aim at the tracks of the T-28. I actually get unlucky in the form of missing the tracks, or shall I say poor aim missing the tracks, but luckily we set him on fire and it takes him a while to be able to put the fire out. So now I'm just going to use him as a shield from the enemy artillery, and we can see the artillery actually probably tries to splash us underwater. And because he's in the water himself, and also stunned I guess from his own artillery, he's unable to be able to traverse the turret around to be able to engage us. And just like that, we managed to change a game, we were outnumbered 2-1, to one, with a bit of an aggressive play there against the Leopard, against the Progetto, and then single-handedly shutting down a tier 8 tank destroyer, we've now put our team right back in it. And just for a moment there, it was 5 versus 5 again, now dropping down to a 4 versus 5 scenario. So in this situation, if I had every crew skill, and I had really good view range on this tank with coated optics and uh, sorry not with coated optics with recon on my commander situational awareness on my radio operator or my commander who's most likely the radio operator inside this tank and i had brothers in arms and i had all of like a full camo crew then i would be able to be much more aggressive because I don't have all of those tools, it's it's quite likely that the tank destroyers are going to be able to outspot me unless I catch them when they're changing positions. And so it's all about using Sixth Sense right now. It's like dipping your toes into the bath, you know? You've got to find out whether it's ready. You don't want to jump into it when it's scorching hot, otherwise you're just going to come out of it burnt. And yeah, with Sixth Sense going off there, I feel like, yeah, that, that bath's not quite ready yet. I'm going to let it cool down just a little bit. No point in trying to rush in against, to all intents and purposes, three tank destroyers, and we're using our mobility here to wiggle left and right to be able to avoid the artillery. So let's get back into position and see if we can find the IS-4 instead and be able to shut them down. So I ping the map and then I press my FE F8 key to let my team know that I'm ready to fire. And now we're hopefully going to connect these rounds into the back of the IS-4. And even though this tank has 0.42 accuracy, one thing this tank does have, however, are good premium rounds. 248 millimeters of penetration. It's definitely not incredible for a tier 9 tank, but it's, it's decent enough. It's going to get the job done, especially if we can manage to get clean shots into the IS-4. Now, interestingly enough, the T-54 actually gets shut down by the Sturitzfang, so that suggests to me that the Sturitzfang is actually either in this location here or is in the center of the map. So now we're just going to make the classic play. This is just Bushwork 101. If you've been a regular on this channel, you'll know that this is one of the key game mechanics that you can use to outplay any vehicle irrelevant of the tank that you're in. If you can penetrate them, they can't see you. If you can penetrate them and they can't see you by pulling back behind the bush here, then you are going to win. So just to explain, once again, you go into the bush until it's transparent. Therefore, you can see through the bush. Then you pull back behind the bush when it's opaque and you can shoot through the bush while maintaining all of your camera rating of the bush, which is very significant. And then to all intents and purposes, the IS-4 is not going to spot me. And just use and abuse game mechanics. That's what it comes down to, boys and girls. When you can't have every advantage, when you can't have um, recon, situational awareness, you can't have yourself brothers in arms, and you don't even have a full concealment crew on this vehicle, you have to use game mechanics to get an advantage. All right, so my sixth sense goes off again. All right, so we've immediately established that there has to be a vehicle here. And it makes sense because that's where the Sturitzfang S1 killed our T-54. And so you'll see that I'm communicating with my team and letting them know exactly where the S1 is. Although, I guess it could be um, the SU-130PM, but considering that the S1 got the kill on the T-54, now we know exactly where they are. So I'm keeping alerting my team. I'm keeping warning them. I don't want the, the Skoda T-27 to get caught out by the tank destroyers right now because we're still down by one tank. Or should I say, it's even with regards to the number of tanks, but the enemy have got a self-propelled gun advantage. So once again, I get spotted, really showing you just how poor light tanks are before you get crew skills on them. 
Crew skills on a light tank make such a world of difference. They change your concealment rating on the move from sometimes starting about 15 or 20 percent up to about 30, 35 percent. And that, that's just ridiculous of a kind of an impact that you can have once you start to be able to move around the map without getting spotted, right? So a great job there by the 705A on my team to shut down the FV215B183 and right now I'm starting to feel a little bit confident. I've managed to maintain my hit points through careful plays. We've done a whopping amount of damage and a whopping amount of spotting. Even though we're in a, a mid-tier light tank, which is not very well equipped for this battle. And now we know exactly where the S1 is. So I ping the S1. But my team is also using effective communication by saying that is where the SU-130PM is on the enemy team. Alright, so a lightly armoured Soviet turreted tank destroyer. The turret makes him dangerous against me. It's going to be hard for me to be able to get ambush shots off on him. But I've got to try and make the plays. Let's aim the shot in carefully. And the AP round would have gone through the fence there to shut him down. Now we're going to be loading a high explosive round. And the high explosive rounds on this tank have 50mm of penetration and 420 alpha damage. Oh, that is a devastating strike. Talk about turning the alpha damage round on the tank destroyer, right boys and girls? And so with that 454 damage dealt to the SU-130PM, he is definitely not looking too well. And I've got enough hit points now. I'm just don't want to stay in for the artillery. So I take a chance to actually block a shot. One of the only good things about the Chinese light tanks is the fact that they have 50 millimeters. Well, this one does of hull armor and 55 millimeters of turret armor. So we actually block the tank destroyer there, shut them down, and put our combined total up towards the 7,000 mark. What a crazy impact for statistically the weakest tier 9 light tank. And we did it not through having an overpowered vehicle. Really any kind of tank could have done this. Any tank that can go at 65, any tank that has a 100mm gun, any tank that has 220mm of pen on its standard rounds or 248 on its premium rounds just by using core game mechanics and also by just really thinking through the situation. Sometimes not listening to the cheeky tank destroyers who want you to sacrifice yourself at the start of the game and just picking apart your opponents one by one by one and becoming the ultimate support vehicle irrelevant of what advantages you have on your tank. So, I really hope you enjoyed this one today. I'm going to show you the post-game stance, but I realise sometimes around Christmas when Wargaming are giving us all of this lovely new content and we have lots of premium vehicles now with two guns I, I can get a little distracted but I don't want to focus on what's important and that is the basics that this channel has always been and will always be focused on trying to 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 help enhance your game through knowledge and better decision making so we're cracking around here for the tier 9 Chinese light tank that cheeky invite of a platoon for the Object 705A meant that we actually managed to get a Brothers in Arms medal and a high caliber. That's a bizarre one. For a tier 9 light tank in a tier 10 game, you'd really expect the heavies or the tank destroyers to be the ones to, to land the higher blows, right? But sometimes your Fosh 155 is only going to be putting off a single shot and it will come down to you. But I must admit, we did fire a lot of premium rounds here after that bounce on the T55A as really, I think, every single ricochet at that point of the game could have been a, a win or a, a loss. But at least we kind of break even, irrelevant of whether we had a premium account or not. So the WZ-132A, is it an absolutely horrific light tank? I'd say in most situations, yes. Anything that you saw me really do in this vehicle, I think we could have done in all of the other tier 9 light tanks. And really, the only point of the Chinese light tank tech tree is to get to tier 10, and I guess to enjoy the, the turret armor and the 390 alpha that you have on the WZ-1321. For me personally, it's definitely a tech tree I'd rather skip out on right now, and I think I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't recommend to go Soviet and go for the T100LT. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Video. If you did and it was helpful, give it a thumbs up, but if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments if there are any game mechanics that you would love to have explained. Be they view mechanics, bush mechanics, anything at all that you've ever wanted to have explained in a detailed video, let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, sorry, I left my outlook open. Don't check yours. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.